Vacuum asks over in the Patreon supporter area, can someone help me fix this simple Max for Live device to stop writing into Live's undo history? This is a problem that is, happens quite often. I've built patches which do this. I've come across this a lot. So what happens is usually when you move something in Live and you go to your undo, it shows you what the last thing that you changed was. But you might have a patch, for example, this drum bus one here, when it's working, it's doing stuff behind the scenes, you go into your edit menu and you see that it's now changed the undo history. It's written a bunch of stuff to the undo history that you don't want. This can be very annoying because you might be working on something and not realizing this is happening and if you want to go back uh, there's a hundred entries for something and you no longer can undo the changes that you've made. So I'm going to show you how to fix this quickly. What we're going to do is open the max patch with this button here. It's the one on the left on the top right hand side. This will open up the patch. This is what it looks like here. I'm going to click on the unfreeze device. This may or may not be active. If it's active click on it to turn it off. This allows us to edit things. I'm going to go to the view menu and I'm going to go to parameters. This is going to show us all of the parameters that can be changed within the patch in one list like so. So here we go. And if we look at the list, we look at the name and we can see we have live number box one. If I was to click on the little uh, magnifying glass next to this, it's going to show us where that is. I'm going to go reveal and patcher. There it is, it's the C2. So when this patch changes this box, it's going, hey, I want to write this to lives under history. We don't want that. So in this live number box one row here, I'm going to go across to visibility, change it from automated and stored to hidden. I'm also going to do it for live number box two because this is the one below it. And I noticed that this is similar it just looks like it might also add to the undo history. So I'm going to guess that this is live number box two. Let's have a look. Or is it not? That's live number box without the one. So let's go search, reveal and patcher. There it is. I'm going to change this to hidden as well. Now I'm going to refreeze the patch by clicking freeze the button here. I'm going to go save. And I'm going to close it down. Very good. Now let's move the volume, have a look. Undo track volume, very good. Let's play the patch. Let's go back to our edit and you'll see that the volume is still there. It has no longer written to the undo history. Here's one more example of how this can happen and how to fix it. I've built a simple max for live patch here that has a live dial that simply goes up from zero to its max 127 and it's attached to the macro one of this audio effect rack. You'll see that this is moving alongside this. The problem is every time this goes up in an increment, it writes to the undo history. You'll see we have undo change. If I go and move my volume here and go back to the edit menu, it still says undo change. So any thing I change here is going to quickly get swept out of the way by these constant changes. So the way we fix this one is we open up the Max for Live patch like before, but we're going to go into the patcher mode. This is presentation mode. This is what you see in Ableton Live or what the user sees. We click on this button here to go into patching mode. This gives us the internal workings. Now the problem here is this live object. It's been given this information here which says what to change, in this case the audio effect macro 1, and it also has a value. We're going to replace this with something else. So I'm going to push N to create a new object. I'm going to type live.remote tilde, that's the object that we want, and I'm going to feed the output of this, which is what we want to change into the rightmost inlet. So this is telling the live remote what to change. And I'm going to feed the, the, the value of this live dial into the left inlet. So we don't need the prepen set value. We don't need the live object anymore. So the live remote is different to the live object. The live object basically just pings that particular parameter over and over every time something changes. Whereas a live remote, once it gets told what it needs to control, it locks it up. It says, this is mine. Any changes that this patch now makes to this parameter is not going to be written to the undo history. It grays the parameter out in Ableton Live and it's completely excluded from the undo history. And we also don't need that set value. We can feed this a a value directly in to the left inlet. So just once again, you replace the live object with a live remote and you remove the value that says prepend set value. It may actually say set value uh, $1. This is another thing that you might see. So this is the same as prepend set value, but 
we just get rid of either of those and have the live dial feeding directly into the live remote. Now let's have a look at this patch now. I'm going to save this, close this down, and you'll see this is already grayed out. So it's retained the, uh, the information on what parameter that we want to change. In this case, it's the parameter one, which is the gain. Um, and if I start this live dial moving now, you'll see that the gain is moving, but it's grayed out. That means that it's, it's, it's locked. I can't change it. I can't do anything to it. max for live has authority over it. So if I go to the edit menu, uh, we'll change something. If I change the volume and go to the edit menu, you'll see that our track volume is there. If we were to change send A and go to the edit menu, you'll see that it is there. So this no longer writes to the live undo buffer history.